So, essentially it looks at what makes our life worth living. It is going beyond what makes our life difficult and as we looked at in the previous session, it is not only about studying what makes our life worth living, but also look at how to improve and nurture and flourish our present lives. So, it looks at interventions it looks at the applicable practical programs and steps to actually realize these values and create these positive experiences in our day to day life. What constitute positive psychology? If we try to understand in terms of the variables, this is a mind map of so many variables which can be studied, which are studied in positive psychology. You can see how one variable leads to more number of variables and a tree of the positive psychology field emerges. So, if you look at it, it studies emotions, it studies eudaimonic approaches, it studies applied positive psychology, it looks at psychology of time, it looks at strength and virtues and all these things are further result into many more variables, life experiences. There are variety of positive emotions, humor is one of them, transcendence, justice, courage, temperance, positive coping, coping with choice, uh, positive aging, positive business, positive education, positive therapy, positive coaching, all these are the fields which are emerging in the field of positive psychology. So, you can see that there are some of the fundamental states, emotions which are studied in the positive psychology and their reflection is further studied in education, management and it can be studied in many, many fields. I can give only one example, how the core ideas of positive psychology are applied or can be applied and can be studied and are relevant in the other fields of uh, studies. So, we can take this example by uh, work of uh, Seravada and uh, colleagues. They have very recently published a systematic literature review on tourism management perspective and they looked at how many positive psychological characteristics and how positive psychological variables can be studied in the tourism management. So, uh, triggers for tourist well being, those variables are about happiness, positive emotions, savoring, uh, character strengths, gratitude, humor, mindfulness, engagement, relationships, meaning, accomplishment. These can be looked at as the antecedent of well being. These antecedents may lead to positive episodes. Uh, which are related to social intervention, uh, sorry, which are related to social environment, natural environment and built environment, tourist experience and we can also look at how different countries vary in with respect to some of these things. Uh, positive aging through social support, belongingness to social world, how these things are affected in the tourism context through the antecedent of well being and well being itself. And that naturally has consequences and consequences naturally will be studied in those aspects which are relevant in that particular field. So, if we look at the example of tourism management, uh, for them the consequences is revisiting intention, person should be willing to come back to that place again, uh, positive word of mouth person talks about it. Uh, in a positive way with others, uh, positive attitude towards poverty elevation and developmental issue is also studied in the uh, tourism management and that can be the 
outcome of the well being and the positive episodes. Uh, residents participation in value co creation with tourist. You remember we in the very first session we discussed about how our economic activities and business organizations have moved beyond selling goods, commodities or services to create experience and create opportunity for transformation of the experience in collaboration with the customers. And similar thing can be studied in the context of uh, tourism management and that is what is written residents participation in value co-creation with the tourist. This can also be resulted by positive episodes which are the result of the antecedent which are the result of some of the aspects of well being. There can be multiple theories which are uh, uh, which are studied first in the positive psychology they are still applicable in many of these situations. So, broaden build theory, PERMA model, mindfulness theories or uh, flow theory all these can be applied in the tourism management. So, this is just one example how positive psychology in terms of its variables, episode and consequences can be studied in a field, in a particular field. At this moment, I would like you to reflect and take another reflection exercise. You can pause this lecture and uh, take your pen and pen, uh, pen and pad and depending and think about what is your profession. You may be in teaching, you might be in the IT industry, you might be in the banking, you might be student of engineering, you might be student of social sciences and so on and so forth. Just pay attention to the to your professional context or your academic context. And in that context, I would like you and I invite you to reflect on first start writing the desirable outcomes, desirable states, desirable situations in your professional or academic context. For example, if you are in the project management team, the desirable consequences or desirable outcome in the project management team will be timely completion of the project, uh, positive interaction in the team, uh, proactive problem solving and many others. Similarly, if you are a R and D professional, you can look at uh, innovative experiment taken place, amount of collaborative projects, uh, the number of uh, creative ideas being generated in a meeting or looking at the high impact project and collaboration of the various specialization in the field. So, you can look at these consequences. If you are a banker, you can think about what is the customer satisfaction level consequences or business level consequences, so on and so forth. So, whichever profession you are and whichever academic uh, uh, program you are, you can think about what is the expected consequences, expected outcome in your field. Then think episodes, what positive episodes may result into those consequences. So, for example, uh, regular meetings or timely face to face meetings can be a good positive episodes for uh, creative ideation in an R and D team or uh, pleasant customer interaction and proactive problem solving, helping customer to choose the appropriate uh, product, financial product in the example of banking industry, that can be a good important desirable episode for a banker and that will naturally result into consequences, the expected consequences, business related consequences or positive word of mouth consequences or customer satisfaction is also one of the consequences. So, you write down the episodes. So, first write down the positive expectations or positive outcome, expected consequences, expected outcome in your field. Then look at what 
might be the episodes which can help you to create those consequences and then think about what might be the positive psychological variables which can result to those episodes. So, while explaining this model I started from the positive psychology variables, then move to episodes and then consequences, but when you are doing this exercise for your own context, you I advise you to start with consequences because that is most obvious to you, that is most immediate concern of yours and then you can think about what episodes are important to be created to, to create these consequences and then what psychological mechanism might be governing those episodes or triggering those episodes. And fourth question comes about what theories, which are the theories can explain this whole sequence. So, that is how we can apply these ideas of positive psychology in the specific uh, professional or academic context.